Hi everyone, today we're talking about Canada and the American Civil War. The American Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865, and Canada wouldn't officially exist as a federation for another two years, in 1867. However, the building blocks for Canada existed. This included the province of Canada, the maritime colonies, British Columbia, Vancouver Island, and Crown Territory administered by the Hudson Bay Company, called Rupert's Land. These were British colonies during the American Civil War, but had their own identities. These colonies, like Britain, would remain neutral, but there were tensions. Despite neutrality, Canadians largely supported the Union. Slavery had been completely abolished in Canada by 1834. Some 40,000 American slaves, many from the South, escaped to Canada before the Civil War and brought with them a disdain for the Southern states. The Northern states had the benefit of cultural and economic ties with Canada. As such, many Canadians, or British North Americans, upwards to 55,000 men, enlisted to fight for the Union. Though some men fought for the South, and some Canadian churches, and occasionally the press supported the right for independence and self-governance of the South. Back in Britain, there were even politicians who supported the Confederacy. However, they were few, as Washington warned Britain. Support of the South could lead to war, and Britain didn't want to risk a fledgling Canada being invaded by the U.S. The first major test between Canada and the U.S. was in November of 1861, during the Trent Affair. An American warship stopped the British mail ship RMS Trent on the high seas, seizing two Confederate diplomats. The British, obsessed with naval dominance and freedom, took this seriously. They demanded the return of the diplomats and sent 14,000 combat troops to Canada and the Maritimes. Further plans were drafted in Canada to raise 40,000 militia. Lincoln released the diplomats and famously cautioned his Secretary of State, William H. Seward, one war at a time. Tension remained. In 1862, the Grand Trunk Railway Brigade was formed, a unit of Canadian volunteer militia, who were also railway employees. Their main responsibility was to protect Canada's vital railway lines. Despite only sharing a border with the North, Canada did see Confederate activity. Maritimers were particularly sympathetic to the South, as many desired their own independence. Confederate blockade runners often found aid in Halifax. In December of 1863, a Union tug, the Chesapeake, was captured by Confederate sympathizers from the Maritimes, who planned to take it south to North Carolina. However, it was overtaken by Union ships in the waters of Nova Scotia. The ship was escorted to Halifax and eventually returned to the Union, but the Confederate sympathizers escaped with the help of locals, much to the anger of the American government. On the mainland, the Confederacy attempted to establish an intelligence operation in Canada, setting up one secret base in Montreal. In October of 1864, Confederate agents crossed the border and robbed three banks in St. Albans, Vermont, killing a U.S. citizen and escaping with $170,000. The Union pursued them across the Canadian border, creating an international incident. The Canadians eventually arrested the Confederate raiders. A Canadian court ruled that because they were soldiers under military orders, officially neutral Canada could not extradite them. Amazingly, Canada freed the raiders, but returned what money was found. The raid turned many Canadians against the Confederacy. The Confederate agents in Canada realized this, and no further raids were made. Ultimately, the American Civil War boosted Canada's economy. The Union bought up significant Canadian food and manufactured goods to support their armies. The tension between the US and Britain further expedited the need for a united Canada. The Dominion of Canada was formed on July 1, 1867 only two years and three months after the end of the American Civil War. The Civil War was also a lesson in too much decentralized power for the founding fathers of the Canadian Confederation, and inspired Canadian government checks and balances, including the appointed Senate and British-appointed Governor-General. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this little brief on Canada and America's Civil War. If you want to support the channel, you know what to do. Like, sub, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. And I hope to see you next time.